I'm live. People of the world. <laughs> I am live doing the first part of the brave quilt. Um, I'm just gonna pitter patter around here for a minute while we let people come on. Um, today I have my lovely studio manager, Miss Callan, behind the live camera. And I also have a second camera. So if you see me going like this, I'm looking at a, sec a second camera. Um, the live videos on Instagram will let me run this whole thing, answer questions, let you comment, let you ask me questions and all that sort of thing. Um, and I can save it to my grid. So if you're on Instagram, you'll be able to come back and watch this anytime. What you won't be able to do is see the comments and things that were happening during the feed, the live feed. Once it's posted, it'll be a new set of comments. So um, Callan is going to read off when there's questions to me. So you'll hear her chiming in. And, um, and then of course, we also decided to do a regular recording of this so that we will have something we can save because I can't download this live video and save it um, and locate it elsewhere. So we've got this other camera running too so that we'll have all of it recorded in case we need to locate it other places on the interwebules. Um, I thought that I would start off just chatting real quickly about Brave. Brave is my newest um, collection for Free Spirit that's out in stores. It shipped in May, which seems like five seconds ago, but here we are heading towards July, which is crazy. Um, and this is the Brave quilt. Someone asked me today, okay, the collection's called Brave, but what's the quilt called? It's also called Brave, just to keep it simple. Um, if you've seen some of my chats about the collection, it was inspired by just very spontaneously approaching um, artwork for a collection. Normally I'm making lots of plans, taking photos, doing sketches, but this time I just went in cold. I went in cold and just started drawing whatever came to mind. I didn't use any sort of references. Um, I'm very often using floral references. Um, and I did that just as a way to kind of refresh my um, approach to making art for fabric. And so the Brave Fabric Collection is what came out of that. Um, so I felt like with the concept of Brave behind this whole collection, the quilt should also be very sort of like pow, you know, and, um, and kind of like very much grab your attention. And so we have a really dynamic layout of this quilt. I will say that one of my favorite things to do, I was mentioning this in lecture last week, one of my favorite things to do when I'm doing a patchwork quilt um, or one that is mostly patchwork, which, or it just has a touch of applique, which this one does. I love creating patterns that are deceivingly simple. And I really believe that this pattern is so much more simple to put together than it might appear. And most of that is because of the really intentional and specific arrangement of color and fabric and print within the quilt. And so that there's these secondary things going on when you took put two similar blocks next to each other, depending on how you arrange the fabric. But that's a little bit behind the quilt. Um, those of you that have already got your booklets, if you think you didn't get the templates, open that bag and open up the booklet and pop out your little templates. They're all slid inside if you received um, the booklet already. And um, for those of you that do not have a kit, Maybe you're not sure you wanted to do it. Um, maybe you wanted to wait and see what the live was before you wanted to dive in. There are still some shops out there that have some kits available. So go to the Free Spirit website under their Be Inspired tab. You can scroll down and click on the Brave Club and you'll land on a page that has a bunch of information about the kit and the collection, but then there'll be a link that says, click here to see participating retailers. And if you click there, you'll see the participating retailers. My um, shop, Craft South, is one of them. We are still selling and still have fabrics for the Brave Club. 
we have moved on. We've sold all out of these booklets. There are no more booklets left to be sold from us. Some of your shops still have the kit and the booklets available. If you find a shop that only has the fabric, you can go on my website, autumnmariahorner.com or craft-south.com. They'll both get you to the same place and just shop brave from the first page and that'll take you to a page that has all the fabrics and all the everything, but it also has a PDF version of this because we are drained on the printed versions of them if you can't already find it from a shop. So if you're in Australia, if you're in England, if you're in another part of the world where you can't find a shop but you can find the fabric, um, you can still get the pattern by PDF, okay? But let's chat about the pattern and chat about um, how to use the pattern, which sounds kind of simple, but I actually go through in this book and tell you specifically how to use the pattern, how it's organized. Because I'm sharing tips with you and some of you are receiving fabrics monthly or working with your shop in a little grouping. I know there's some shops that got together to watch the live today. Hi to you. Groans is one I know for sure that is all gathered around a video screen, I believe. Um, the way that this is organized is in five parts and I don't call it months because maybe it's not going to happen for you in June and that is not an issue. You can do this quilt whenever you want. You can come back and watch these videos whenever you want. Um, in short, you don't have to have this video in order to, um, make your quilt because you've got this whole amazing booklet. So when you first, um, open up the Brave, uh, booklet, you're going to have some notes from me, the suggested materials, how to use the pattern, and then you're going to have this diagram that has alphabetically labeled sections or blocks of the quilt. Um, so for instance, month one, we're going to be focusing on A, B, C in the center and also some circles for G and J. And at the beginning of each month heading, these color bars tell you you're at the beginning of a month, you'll see some letters in parentheses. And those letters in parentheses tell you what parts of the quilt you are either going to be sewing that month or maybe you're just cutting and prepping, okay? Um, but that kind of gives you an orientation. And as well in your cutting instructions at the beginning of the cutting instructions, um, say step one, it might have an A in parentheses. That means you're just about to cut for the A, which is right here in the center, okay? So that kind of helps you always know where you are. I did that because some people don't want to cut a month and then sew a month. Some people want to cut the entire quilt. So if you want to go through all of it and cut the entire quilt, um, that gives you the letter that you can pile up all your fabrics into, okay? So you can organize all your fabrics by letter so you know where you are when it's time to start sewing. Um, the other thing that I hope is really helpful are these fabric diagrams. You can see that the entire yardage that's included is sort of grayed out and what's shown in full color are the pieces that you're going to be cutting. What I've shown you is the specific amount of yardage that is part of the kit, okay? So obviously it always is going to look like there's an extra amount of fabric, like why do I have all this fabric? You have all that fabric because depending on where it's cut in the print repeat, we wanted to be sure and give you enough so that you can get your fussy cuts out of that, okay? So let's talk about the first part of this quilt. As long as there's no more questions. Are we good, Callan? Okay, cool. There's no questions so far. Not more questions. Any questions? Um, so the first part, we use four different fabrics, and we are going to be focusing on the center block. Now you might think that the center big block is this. It's actually an on point nine patch. Do you see that? So these surprise fabrics right here, those are just cut out of, um, directly out of the fabric with no patchwork at eight and a half inches. And then this on the corner is a half square triangle and there's four of them and that's what creates the center nine patch and it's just set on point. Um, so we're working with both of the surprise fabrics which is this lovely and this lovely and you can see on there that there's also a bunch of circles it's telling you to cut but you're actually just going to be cutting those out and saving them for later and I'll talk about those circles and how you might be prepping them in just a second. 
Um, but, but you can also see that you're going to be cutting squares out of this fabric. Um, so I have mine cut here. I have one from the coral that's going to go in the center. Ba -bow. And then I have four from this green color that's going to be going kind of in a cross from the center. Okay. Easy peasy. I mean, really, I've designed this fabric to make it so simple for you to center that flower. Um, so those little kind of subordinate flowers, if you will, in the background, kind of just barely sneak into each of the corners. So if you see that through your eight and a half inch view, you know you've got it pretty much on center. Okay, so the other parts of this are gonna be those half square triangles. Ba ching Those are my sound effects, I hope you like those. So those are gonna be going on each corner of this nine patch, which is A, B, and C blocks, okay? Um, but I wanna talk a little bit about how I've asked you to cut the triangles for um, this nine patch, or for the, uh, the half square triangles in particular. So you have this beautiful little giggle fabric, and I called it giggle because it looks like little flowers are kind of bumping into each other and getting off center because they're giggling. Um, and you have this lovely Petaluza fabric. Petaluza, can you see the butterfly kind of acting like a flower head? I named it Petaluza because that is the Greek word for butterfly, which I've always thought is very sweet because it's so similar to the Greek word for flower, which is Leluza. And so I think they have such a lovely correspondence to each other. And so I kind of combined um, flowers and butterflies into one print. Anywho. Um, so this fabric, you're going to be fussy cutting, okay? You fussy cut these, certainly pretty straightforward. You don't have to fussy cut this at all. Yay! You do need to start off with a big square of this. Um, you're going to be cutting two nine and a half inch squares of this. Okay, so you'll start with a nine and a half inch square, but then you are actually going to cut it. I think I forgot to give myself a rotary. Hold please, admire the quilt. Doo -ba -doo -ba -doo. This is a great thing about live. I feel, I feel more like with live videos, I'm allowed to mess up a little bit. I hope you guys are okay with that feeling. Um, we start with a nine and a half inch square, two of them out of the giggle fabric, and to create our right triangles, we are just gonna cut it, okay? From one corner to another. So I'm gonna lay a nice long grid on that. Not only is this fabric, um, you don't need to fussy cut it at all, but it also, it doesn't matter to me, shouldn't matter to you what orientation this print is turned on. I think I actually cut mine a different way here than I have here, but I'm not really worried because from afar that print kind of feels the same, um, no matter how you orient it, okay? So in some places in the booklet, I'm gonna have you, um, create triangles one way and other places I'm going to have you create triangles this way. Um, this is the easy way to create a triangle. No big deal, right? But if I took this fabric and cut a square out of it and then cut it from corner to corner to make two triangles, I would no longer have two triangles that are cut on this very specific flower orientation that I have here because I really wanted those flowers or butterflies to grow out of the center. So what I ask you to do rather is pretend this is your new template, okay? This is your template to create a triangle from um, so that we can have these really specific placements on the flowers, okay? Now, if you would rather, you know, use a grid, you can do that um, because some grids have these nice um, angled lines on both of them. I highly recommend like the nine and a half inch grid is really great for this month for squaring and for creating blocks um, or your HSTs. But if you want to create a triangle out of template plastic, you can do that too. You can create it out of paper, but you can't see through paper. But what you can do is see everything but where the triangle is. And that's kind of a help too. And what I mean by that is when we lay out this loverly Petaluza fabric and we know that we want the point 
uh, the center point of the triangle to be right on that stem, we can kind of just lay this on and see where we are. And then like, okay, that means I can lay this down here. Get these things out of the way so you can see what I'm doing. We want it, the bottom point to be on this center stem. Okay, here's this here so you can see what I mean. And so I can use that triangle, you can flip it in either way you like. I can use that triangle to lay on here and basically I'm treating the triangle like a template, okay? Um, and sort of lining things up. This pattern is quite symmetrical, so it's pretty straightforward. In all of my little um, triangles here, I can see about two leaves on that stem. Um, now these have already been squared off, so maybe there's a little bit more than two leaves, but in short, like I don't have that much there, so I can move down if I need to. Again, on your booklet, it's gonna kind of show you the fabric layout of where you can fit those triangles within that yardage. And again, you have so much yardage, so we're sure that you can get four out of that, okay? So, wherever you decide to set this, just set it the same way every time on the flowers, okay? So, if you would rather use, this is a nine and a half inch grid, which is the size I'm starting at before I end up squaring them to eight and a half. You can lay this right on top to protect your piece that you've put here. Or if you're pretty confident and you know where you want your top line to be, you can draw a top line across flowers on right on the fabric. You can draw a top line here, or you can just draw a straight line kind of lining up elements across where you want the top of the triangle to be. And then you can set this line, this angled line of the grid on your drawn line, center the point right down onto the stem and cut your triangles, okay? So once you have those cut, you can sew them together um, on that angle. I'm gonna get this out of the way. And once they're all sewn, you just need to square those and trim them down to an eight and a half inch block so that they match this. Because right now, as they started, they're a bit bigger, okay? So we want them to be eight and a half inches. And I'm gonna use that angled line um, and line it up with my center angled seam there. And what I'm going to do first is just kind of trim off once I've got that lined up. I only cu cut two sides at a time when I'm squaring, okay? So the first thing that I'm going to do is make sure that I've got fabric going all the way through the edge of two sides. I'm focusing on this one and this one. And I've got some little wiggles and moves there. I'm not super stressed about that. But first, I'm just going to clean this up. I'm not measuring anything yet. So I've just kind of cleaned off a little bit of corner. So these are my nice, cleaned corner edges here. And I'm going to flip it around. And now I'm working with the other two edges. And I'm measuring off of that corner now. Okay? So I am going to put the eight and a half inch mark against my two first clean edges, all right? And sometimes rulers will like put the number an inch and a half away or an inch away. You always have to be sure. I literally every time, because I have so many different grids and they're all so different, I will literally sometimes just point and count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and a half, okay? Why not triple check? Eight and a half. Okay. All right, so now I'm going to be trimming all this off to get eight and a half. But actually, I want to make sure I lied a little bit. I want to make sure that this is in the center as well. So I'm actually, fresh tip, fresh tip. I actually want to make sure that 
I probably need to just go actually a little bit more like trimming off of each side. I forgot that I had a really fussy cut triangle. So I'm gonna trim a little, a little, not all of it off of this side. I'm probably making zero sense to all of you. Should we start fresh from the beginning? <laughs> Um, because I want to keep that point in the center, let me put this eight and a half inch mark in the center of that. Okay, so I've got, got the eight and a half inch mark in the center of my stem and this angle line on my seam. And I'm going to go back around one more time. Okay, so I'm going to go now here. Okay. Doopity -doopity. Okay. So now I'm going to be trimming this edge off one more time. I've got an eight and a half here. I've got an eight and a half there. And I have the seam, or sorry, the stem of the flower coming right into the corner. Okay. I forgot when I was squaring with you at the beginning. It's not only about cleaning up that first edge, but it's also about making sure that your final point here has that stem going into the middle of it, okay? We have a question. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what brand ruler do you use? Um, I have so many, I'll be really honest with you. I think the most most of the rulers that I have are this OmniGrid brand. This one happens to be Simplicity Studio. I do kind of like having the ones with the yellow markings on them. Um, what they do is they put the yellow marking right behind the black marking so that the black markings are more evident to you. Um, the black alone markings, I think, make it a little harder to see the lines on the fabric. So, especially if I'm working on black as I am today. Um, but, so squaring your um, eight and a half inch half square triangles is just about how you would always square something, but not just the corners, but also, not just the outer edges, but also this stem landing in that corner is something to keep your eyes on, okay? Which I totally on purpose forgot about that at the beginning just to walk you through that. So let's not forget about it when we're actually getting to it. But the orientation, I have all these little scraps, the orientation of these guys is that we have all of the black corners facing out, okay? So let's just go ahead and lay out what this block is gonna look like. I love it already. This goes in the center, okay? And our green surprise fabrics go here. So this is super simple sewing. I thought we'd start off nice and simple in the center for part one of this quilt. And this is the beautiful orientation of your A, B, and C blocks, okay? So you can seam them in rows, do these seams and then these seams and then these seams, press these this way, press that one that way, press that that way, so that you have that kind of um, sending the seam allowances in two different directions when you put those seams together, okay? And then, you know, when you sew all those together, and then you have your center square. Yay, good job. Let's talk about circles for the G and the J borders. Those are gonna be from these fabrics. Now then, maybe you think you've only ever done um, fusible applique, or maybe you've never done any applique, but there are in general two different methods. One is raw edge, and the other is a seam allowance or needle turned edge, either by machine or by hand. The template that comes in your book, we don't have to worry about this one for an, until another month, but here's your circle template. This circle template is exactly the size of your finished circle, okay? It's got no extra seam allowance on it. It should be exactly the size of your circle, whether you have added a seam allowance and turned it back, 
as I did. I did needle turn applique on these, so I stitched them down by hand. Or you wanna have a raw edge and not worry about stitching anything back and just fuse it onto your quilt. That's the kind of more simple approach. You would just need to use um, like a decorative or a zigzag or a machine stitch to secure those edges down. You do need to decide which of those two methods you're gonna use, either with a seam allowance and turned back or without a seam allowance and fused into place, you need to decide that before you cut your shapes because it's gonna be two different cutting methods, okay? Let's say we want to cut the shape and add a seam allowance so that we have something to turn back. What we're gonna do is position this on our circles once you've worked out or maybe already cut out your squares, work out all your circles using the diagram, the cutting diagram against your yardage. I draw with a pen, yes, really, a pen. Sometimes a mechanical pencil, but I'm using this kind of pink pen. Um, I'm on kind of a pink fabric, so I'll be able to see it. But um, once you turn it back, you can just keep turning your fabric until you don't see the pen anymore, okay? Um, you can lightly, just very lightly trace once you have it positioned. Okay, you can very lightly trace that. You could also use any pen that is removable. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see that very well on camera, but that is a little pink line that indicates my turned edge. So this is me prepping for something that's gonna have a seam allowance. And then before you cut, you'll want to add seam allowance to this. So you'll wanna cut a quarter of an inch outside the line that you've just drawn. That's what you're gonna be turning back, okay? You can do that with scissors. Um, I'm gonna do it with the rotary right in front of you. And this um, quarter inch seam allowance, it doesn't have to be perfect, because remember it's gonna get tucked under. It's not seamed to anything. It doesn't matter if it's exactly a quarter of an inch um, or three eighths or somewhere between those two. But I'm just gonna cut this out, staying clear of my line. I'm so suspicious of disappearing pens and chalk pencils that I may or may not ever get out. I didn't get it all cut. Or I have a dull blade, or both. So I, I tend to never recommend a specific um, pencil that may or may not go away, or a pen. Um, but I now have this circle that has a drawn line on it, and I know that when I go turn it down, to sew that I'm just gonna keep turning until I can't see that line anymore. And that's the seam allowance that I'm gonna have tucked under, okay? So that's how you can prep for um, a needle turn or a machine turned um, edge. Now, if you had a disappearing um, pencil, or even though I have it on there, I'd have to make sure I got that turned back just so on the line. You can use these forms to press a crease, but we'll share that later when we get into applique land. But um, whatever mark you do make on here, just make sure it's a lighter one or one that's gonna be camouflaged pretty well or one that you can make go away if you need it to, okay? But, didn't dun dun Okay, so that's how we prep the cutting. So cut out all your circles that way if you're gonna do needle turn applique. Um, I also want to show you how to prep the easy way. Um, there was one extra different, there is one extra step, and there's also one extra product that you need to use if you're going to do a raw edge fusible situation. So I've got little circles started here of the um, fusible, and I use the Pelon 805, also known as Wonder Under. And what this material is, is actually just a really thin, sheer, fibery, soon to be glue layer. It just feels like this kind of feather, sheer, kind of webbing almost. Um, and then it's backed with sort of a, almost a parchmenty or wax paper. Um, that, that paper side, you can feel the difference. Like you can feel the fibery side and you can feel the papery side. On the papery side, you can trace with a pencil all the circles that you need. Trace, 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 trace. 
add a border around it when you cut out. It doesn't have to be half inch, quarter inch, three eighths inch, it doesn't matter. You just need a border. I don't want you to cut this on the line, okay? Um, so cut out all the circles that you need from this fusible. And when you go to press it onto your fabric, the great thing about this fabric is it's deep and rich enough that you can actually see the design from the wrong side because that's the side we're gonna be working from when we press with fusible. So make sure you have the fibery side down against the flower, center it, and then press. And when you press with the heat of an iron, you don't need steam, um, you just need a nice hot iron. When you press from the, with the heat of the iron, that fibery layer is basically gonna turn into glue, okay? And then what you're gonna do, once that's sealed on there and cooled off, you're gonna take your scissors and cut right on that line. And you want a nice clean cut on this line because that's gonna be your final edge of your fused circle, okay? So you would set that up, press all those onto the back of all your circles, cut them all out, and I'm not even gonna share what we're gonna do after that because that's for another month. But that paper, but I'll give you a tip a little early one, that paper will eventually be peeled off and then you'll be pressing it right onto your quilt in position, okay? But I'll show you that up close and personal when we get to that month. So that's basically part one of the Brave Quilt, is that big center nine patch with some fussy cutting, um, all those circles on the G border, all those circles on the J border. Um, and those are just gonna be set aside. Those two words are like my favorite sewing words in a pattern, set aside. And it's like emotionally nice. So um, I don't know if Callan has gotten any questions. No, okay, awesome. So um, I guess I'm telling you mostly, most of everything you need to know. And if some of you come back and you watch this later, um, when it's no longer live, feel free to go ahead and ask questions. I know that depending on where you are in the world or like, you know, maybe you have a job or kids or something that you need to be doing during this time, that is absolutely no problem. Um, you can go ahead and ask questions in the comment section once this is posted to the grid and I will keep checking to make sure I've answered them. Probably not a lot of questions um, in the first part of this because it's pretty straightforward. Um, something, oh, guess what I just got yesterday. I got this beautiful box from my friends at Orophil. It's called Brave Stitches. Guess what's inside? We have just listed these on the website um, in perfect timing for you to start your Brave projects but inside are two different kits of 10 colors that I have chosen just for this collection. So this is the 50 weight, has its own little box. The 50 weights I did mostly more kind of neutral um, threads and some deeper, went, some deeper ones. So these are perfect for your seaming, um, for your applique hand stitching, um, for garments, for all sorts of um, sewn projects. And then, because I couldn't help myself, I've also chosen 10 12 weight. Look how bright and beautiful. So the 12 weight are the thicker threads that I love to use the very most for hand quilting, but any kind of embellishment, sashiko, um, those of you that do applique stories or like really ornamental kind of stitching, these are so beautiful for that as well. Um, so these kind of match some of the hotter, brighter highlight colors that are in the collection, but something like this, um, this really deep one, I don't remember what number that is. It's 1248. I love this color so much. It's kind of, it's almost like a rich denim. And in fact, it would look really amazing sewn onto um, the giggle fabric in that colorway. So, and then there's a couple that I really love for quilting too, and not just embellishment projects, but just really basic pale shades are so pretty for quilting. Um, if you want your stitches to show up, 
I usually use an embroidery needle when I use those threads. So um, that is a gorgeous, gorgeous collection from my pals. I love working with Aurafil and love creating collections with them. And I actually, this is the first time we've ever done a box with this orientation. And you know, the smaller cardboard boxes are pretty and they make a gorgeous gift if you're giving someone a kit. But um, this is actually really, truly reusable without being the big expensive tin ones. This is like a fantastic little setup. I think I might actually keep them in here. <laughs> Usually they just start running all around the studio and I can't corral them, but this is a perfect way to keep all your colors together. So we've just listed those on the website today. And if there's no further questions, do we have one? Yeah, I have one. It says, do you use an app? I'm not sure if they mean for designing the fabric or the quilt, but oh. open-ended, do you use apps? I do use apps. I'll tell you a couple of them. So I answer your question, even though I'm not sure exactly what we're referencing with the app. Um, I use an app called Procreate to draw my collections with. I use software called eQuilter to design my quilts. Um, my most prized way to design quilts if I'm just doing it for the love of it is make sure I'm working on a design wall and cut and sew and put it up and cut and sew and do it put it up but when I'm creating a quilt um, like I created Brave and all my other quilts that go with collections that are going to be patterns for you to use I'm doing that before I even have fabric and so using a um, software program like eQuilter allows me to use digital images of my fabrics and digitally design what the quilt is gonna look like and where the fabrics are gonna go. Um, it's really, really handy. And that software, many of you are probably very familiar with it. I'm sure there's others um, out there, but it also has a massive library of basic blocks like nine patches, half square triangles, and hundreds of others that I can kind of compose and put together when I'm building um, a quilt design and I can also draft my own blocks too whether applique or patchwork so that's pretty cool. Is there an embroidery needle and applique needle brand that you like to use? Um, we have always kind of used John James um, in the store uh, just because they have such a broad range and they're reasonably priced. Um, I can't really specify sizes of embroidery needles that I use very well because I tend to just pull out the multi-pack, stick them in my pin cushion, and pull out whatever's closest and sharpest. Um, so the applique needles, I'm usually also sometimes using kind of a smaller embroidery needle um, or just a regular sharp sewing needle. I don't personally love applique needles they tend to be really tiny and I think I'm not sure but I think those tiny embroidery needles are designed for just kind of taking one one or two stitches at a time I tend to load several stitches when I'm doing my applique at a time which um, I look forward to sharing with you when we get into that later on in this quilt process but um, I'm kind of a bad notions salesperson because I don't feel like an over um, a allegiance to any one brand or another when it comes to things like needles um, because I think I think more about what it feels like in my hand I think more about like what thread and fabric I'm using and you know what the result is than focusing on um, one brand or another so if it's in my cushion I can thread it it's sharp I'm gonna use it <laughs> So good questions, very good questions. But um, I think that that's about all we're gonna do for you today. So I really appreciate you taking the time to chime in and to watch now or later. Um, I think that the plan, and I'm always leaving room for comical catastrophes when it comes to digital media, but I believe the plan is that we're gonna take this camera over here and the recording that's going on that and locate it at the Free Spirit website. Um, and possibly their Facebook and possibly their YouTube and other places. So, um, cause some of you might not even be on Instagram and I want to have, um, I want to offer the opportunity for you to watch these videos, no matter what platforms you use or don't use. So that is part one of the brave quilt. 
and um, looking forward to sharing part two with you next month and mid-month in July. Be sure to look at my post from yesterday. Um, that gives you all the dates of when I'm going to be doing these lives. And they're always going to be about this time. Um, there's no one time that we can capture everyone around the world live unless you just want to, you know, make coffee and stay up with me. But thanks for tuning in. Over and out. And thank you, Callan, for being the world's best camera holder. See you next time.